Hello guys, and welcome, it is that SW2 dude here today, bringing you yet another Splatoon 3 video. And as you can see, today's video is going to be a full-on guide on how you guys can learn motion controls for Splatoon 3. Now there are many different things to understand for when you are trying to learn to use motion controls. And in this video, we're going to be going through all the basic general things to learn, all the do's and don'ts. And some neat little tips and tricks that can get you a little bit more accustomed to when using gyro controls. Now I want to make this guide as simple as possible so you guys get a really good idea of how I control gyro controls and how many other top players control it. If you didn't know, 99% of top players are using gyro controls because in Splatoon it's the much more beneficial way of playing in comparison to stick controls. There are practically 101 reasons for why you use motion controls over sticks. That's probably better for another video as I can go on and on about it. But today I'm going to teach you guys how you can basically get accustomed to using it. Now the first thing before we go through really anything is the ways you can use motion controls. You can use motion controls like most people do with a pro controller or joy-con grip you could use motion controls with split joy cons personally i wouldn't recommend but there are some people out there who do use it in this way we won't be covering this because i'm not an expert in split joy con and of course there's using gyro control while playing handheld whether you'll be on a switch light or on a regular switch we are not going to be covering how to control it like this because i wouldn't say i'm an expert in it also just imagine that this is a switch console but out of all the options that i have shown whether you are playing handheld switch light or split Joy-Cons or Joy-Con controller. Personally, I feel like the best option is just to have a pro controller because it makes the most amount of sense. And I'll also say for someone who has been a pro for seven years now playing this game, I would highly recommend that you play Splatoon while your Switch is docked while you also have a controller in hand. This by far is the most optimal way in order to actually control the game. Now, while you're following along with this tutorial, I would suggest that you also get your Switch out. You can put it in tabletop mode and basically mimic the things that I'm doing so you guys can have a good idea of how I control gyro controls. Now, we've gone through all of that. I think the first thing to understand when it comes to using gyro controls is the way you hold your controller. Now, to be honest, there isn't really a right or wrong answer when it comes to the way you hold your controller. Personally, I hold my controller fairly flat. There are other ways where you can also can hold your controller like this. This is basically an alternate angle of how you can hold your controller within your hand when playing gyro controls. Now you can either do it flat or you can have your controller upwards or you can have it a mix between the two. It is ultimately up to you, but personally I think what works for me the most is holding it quite flat. Now I'm going to show you guys all the different ways to move your controller while in those three positions. So when you're holding the controller flat like I do, like this, basically the ways you can move, you of course with gyro control, you can move your controller upwards. And this is the basically the motion that you'll do when it comes to moving your controller upwards. And this is the motion that you do when it comes to make moving your controller downwards. When it comes to moving your controller left and right, because that is also something you can do, you're practically moving your controller like this. It's almost like your controller is a steering wheel and you're basically keeping your controller just in one spot, but you're pushing your wrist left and right. You just have to think, I am holding a steering wheel, but it's flat, like I'm a truck driver and I am just turning the wheel side to side to make that left and right motion. This is basically what you want to do when you are holding the controller flat and wanting to move left and right and up and down. Now, why I mentioned that you have to remember that you can move your controller left and right, because I feel like one of the things that a lot of people do forget is that with motion controls, you have a right stick that can be controlled as well, as you can see here. I tend to see when a lot of people are trying to learn gyro control, they tend to only use the up and down, but they completely forget the left and right. And they use the left and right as their stick and they use the gyro up and down. This is basically how you don't want to play gyro controls. I'll further explain why you don't want to do that when we go through all the positions. So that's basically the first method of how you can control gyro. Of course, left and right, like a steering wheel, up and down like that. If you want to do a combination of the two, let's say I wanted to move my controller diagonally, I can move like that. So it's like I'm turning to the right, but also uh, tilting my controller backwards like that. 
or to the left, the same thing, just like that. Or downwards, I push the controller forward and also turn to the right, just like that. Now, if this is not comfortable for you, you don't want to play flat, of course, you can play your controller like this. Now, if you do change your position, make sure to press the Y button so you make sure that you recenter your controller just like this. Now, this one's a little different. It's like holding the controller upwards and more flat. This is like some way that's like a lot of people actually just play video games in general. They kind of have the controller like flat upwards like this. So these are the ways that you can move your crosshair when you're holding the controller like this. Your up and down motion is pretty much the same as the first position. It's pretty much like this. I'm going down and I'm going up just like that. The thing you might notice when you're playing in this position is that if you go down, you kind of want to be aware of your sensitivity because if you go down too much, gyro will basically stop and it'll basically make you go flat or force you to go flat like, like this because if I recenter it like this and I push down, you notice that the gyro stops and I can continue to push my controller forward. It's just something that you want to be aware of and like if you have your controller hold like this, you want to actually know how much you need to push your controller forward to look down and how much you need to push your controller up to look up. Upwards not, might not be so much of a problem, but it's a, just a good to know. Now, when it comes to left and right motion, instead of turning the controller like this and rolling it like I'm using a steering wheel, it doesn't quite work when you're holding it in this way. What does work is that you need to push the controller forward like this. So it's kind of like you're imagining the controller being held by a tightrope or something, and you're basically pushing it forward like this, and you're also pushing it forward like this to your left. And that's pretty much how you're doing it. Now, personally, this is not my favorite position. I kind of feel a little awkward when it comes to like moving gyro in this way. Some people are used to it. Personally, I'm not. But if this is some way that makes you feel comfortable, then by all means, try it in this way as well. And of course, like I said, in the third way, you could have it a mix of two, where it's like this. It kind of doesn't really look too much different on camera, but you can kind of see it's not completely flat and it's not completely upwards. So the same thing, up and down are the same way. When it comes to moving left and right, it's kind of like a hybrid of turning it left and also pushing it, the controller forward just like this. So it's just things to really understand and realize this is basically how you want to be moving your arms when using gyro control. Now, I'm gonna go flat because personally, this is the most comfortable way when it comes to me using gyro control. Now, I did say I would leave it for another video for why motion controls is basically the better or most preferred way to play in Splatoon 3. This is basically a thing that 99% of pros do use in Splatoon 3. I'm going to give you guys brief ideas for why they are. The first thing is that you are more precise with motion controls than in comparison to sticks. You're able to move the crosshair either however slow or however fast, depending on how much you want to move your wrists. The second thing is movement. Your in general movement when it comes to using gyro control is much more precise. With motion controls, you're much more agile and your maneuverability is just much quicker in comparison to sticks. Like I said, you are able to control how fast or how slow you move with uh, motion controls, depending on how much you want to move your wrists. If you want to be able to have much more control over your general character and basically flick to different things at different times, this is why you want to use motion controls. And the last reason I feel doesn't get talked about a lot for why you'd want to use motion controls over sticks is that your general painting and your ability to multitask is just furthered. So like I said, your general painting is a little bit better as you can move up and down, left and right, however you want to paint. Like you can basically choose exactly where you want to paint at every given time, which is quite nice to do. And of course, it's your ability to multitask. So it could be something where you're painting just generally, you hear an enemy behind you, you snap onto that enemy, you take them out, you go back to painting, you snap onto another enemy, and so on and so forth. You can basically be painting, thinking about snapping onto an enemy, go back. Like I said, your ability to multitask is just furthered, and your whole potential as a player is basically just much more opened up. As of course, a large plethora of weapons that you feel like you couldn't use with sticks has been made possible 
when using motion controls. Now I'm going to make a more in-depth video when it comes to that type of stuff in another video, but it's just a couple of things I felt like you should know. Now we're back to learning how to use motion controls. So we've got the controller in hand, we've got our switch docked, and we're basically playing optimally as can be. We also have the way that we want to control our gyro control, which is really good to know. But the next thing we're going to learn when it comes to learning gyro controls is utilizing the stick in the best way possible. There are people out there who use gyro control for only up and down movement, and they think about the stick as their only left and right options. This is what you don't want to do when playing motion controls. If you're playing gyro controls like this, you are doing this incorrectly. If you're only playing gyro and you're forgetting about the stick, you're also playing this whole thing incorrectly. This is basically how you want to utilize the stick when it comes to using gyro. You may notice that there's no Y axis with the stick. You cannot move up and down. This is so that your controller position can stay the same all the time. This is the, also the reason for why I said there's three different ways you can have your controller. If the Y axis was enabled, this will basically be making your controller move up and down and around and basically not make it feel natural. This is the reason for why there's only an X axis for the left stick. But when do we use the left stick when we're playing gyro? When do we use gyro control when we're playing gyro control? <laughs> so this is honestly the best way on how to think about playing gyro control and how to utilize the stick. Is that you want to think that the stick is a camera stick because it is. Imagine playing a game like Breath of the Wild or Banjo-Kazooie, Super Mario Odyssey. You need to think of the camera stick in the same way as its only X axis. So what do you do when you're playing those kinds of games using the right stick? Use it as a camera stick. If I want to look left, I will move my camera stick to look to the left. If I want to look to the right, I will move my camera stick to the right. Splatoon follows the exact same concept when it comes to using the camera control. A pro tip is that you don't want to be ever using this control stick as the aiming stick at all. This is where gyro control comes in. So let's think about it like this. If you have enemies that are on your left, this is how you want to go ahead and start. You push the camera stick to move to the left or adjust it enough that the stick looks in that direction. However fast or slow your stick sensitivity will be will vary, but this is what it would look like if I'm trying to look left. As you saw, I just flick the stick left so I can look at this direction. Now this is basically where gyro control comes in. With the methods of movement on the position that you're holding your controller in, you apply those same studies. So the enemy on my right right here, as I'm looking in this direction, I will now use gyro to basically turn or move my crosshair onto the player. Once it's on the player, I can go ahead and shoot. Now, as you can see, there's multiple targets. So my crosshair was here first, I'll move it here, shoot, I'll then go into the next target that's on my left, turn it to the left, shoot. And I continue onwards like this. Now I'm going to continue on my journey. It seems like there's more players that are on my left. I use the stick to turn into that direction. I then finish off all of this with gyro control. So we just went past all the enemies. Now I want to look all the way back 180. I use the stick to turn to 180. And I use gyro control to finish off all the targets that are in front of me. I go to the right, use the stick to turn right, use gyro controls to finish all those enemies. As you can see here, this is basically how gyro controls is. is not as complicated as it looks when you, I guess, I put it in this way. But this is pretty much all I'm doing when it comes to learning to use gyro controls. Not me learning to use gyro controls, but me showing you how I use gyro controls. Now, of course, this does take some practice and it might take a little bit of time for you guys to actually get used to. But this is basically how you want to play gyro controls when you are just starting out. It's the most easiest way to actually understand how it works. So you see how I'm standing right here and I flick my stick to actually just face each enemy. And I use gyro basically as a finisher to all of this. This is basically how you want to play it. Now again, you really gotta grasp the concept of 
Splatoon is an adventure game. I know it's a shooter, but you really need to understand that you should not be using a stick as a way to aim at your targets. Now, I forgot to add this at the start when it came to actually moving your controller left and right, up and down. Probably, I don't know if it's a thing that some people move their controller like this or this. Yeah, just understand you don't need to be doing this. It really does not take that much movement when it comes to actually moving the crosshair around. Like I said, left, right like this, up, down like this. Now, of course, this is your first time and you're going to need to practice. Practice, practice, practice. It will not make you perfect, but it will make you better. Please remember that concept. You always want to be working to improve yourself. So try and take it slow. As I said before, while you're in the test range, just take it slow. Once you do get more comfortable with motion controls, it should look a lot like this. The point of motion controls, or the point that you would want to get to with motion controls, is that you don't want to even have to think about it. It should just feel like something that becomes very, very natural for you, where you have to push your stick in however much direction, so you understand like how much you need to turn it and how much you, much you need to actually move your motion. It will be something that is just dialed in your brain, and you just don't think about it ever, if you understand what I mean. The things I feel that are going to be very helpful when it comes to actually being comfortable with gyro control is first, deciding on what your sensitivity is going to be. There is no right or wrong answer with what sensitivity you should be picking. Personally, this is me right now. I have a motion control sensitivity of plus 1.5 and plus 5 sticks. That is comfortable for me, but this may not be comfortable for you. So when it comes to being comfortable and learning how which gyro is the best for you, I suggest turning your stick sensitivity and your gyro sensitivity to zero. This is basically the middle ground to both. So you can actually determine how much gyro that you need or how much you want to actually move your controller and how fast or slow you want your stick to be when it comes to removing gyro. Basically, it goes like this. If you feel like your gyro sensitivity is too slow, you speed it up. If you feel like it's too fast, you slow it down. This is why you start on zero. Same with your stick. If you feel like it's too slow, you speed it up. If you feel like it's too fast, you slow it down. Really try to experiment what feels comfortable for you in terms of your gyro control and your stick control because it can make a world of difference to how it feels controlling a game. And lastly, when it comes to using gyro controls, is the first thing I feel like you all should do is don't rush yourself. Don't go straight into ranked battles or go straight into tier 4 and be like, all right, it's time. I'm going to go to use gyro controls and I'm now going to beat up everyone because this dude video empowered me and now I can do anything and damn, I get beaten up because I'm trying to learn and I haven't really got myself con fully comfortable yet. So yeah, please don't do that. The thing that I recommend you all do is make sure to go ahead and play the story mode and use gyro there. This will give you honestly more than enough time to be able to really grasp the control of gyro control as you are playing against AIs. There's a big difference when it comes to actually playing against an AI and a real player. I feel like when it comes to playing against a computer, it's a lot easier to actually learn how the controls work. It's basically like how you pick up a new game and you play the story and you basically feel like you get better as the game goes on. This is personally how I feel. It may not be the same for a lot of you guys, but I think it's honestly the best practice when it actually comes to learning at this new control method. And once you've played the story, then go ahead and take yourself to turf and basically go ahead and see how it feels to use gyro control against real players and basically play this game like how it is intended to. And honestly guys, that is pretty much it when it comes to learning motion controls. Now, honestly, when it comes to learning this, I feel when you just get like a little bit okay with it, it's extremely hard to go back to stick controls. I've done this video before in Splatoon 2 a lot of people said the exact same thing. Once they learn and they got okay with it, they found it very, very hard to go back. And this is something that might happen to you. Maybe it might not and you still feel uncomfortable and you go back to sticks anyway. But if you did learn something from this video, 
Make sure to go and let me know in the comment section below and also like the video as well. I would really appreciate it too if you guys could send this video to as many people as possible for who may be trying to learn how to use gyro controls themselves, whether it's a new player coming into the game or whether it's someone who's using stick controls but wants to really learn how to transfer over to gyro controls. I feel this video would do them wonders and I feel it would actually really help them understand how it really works. So I would really appreciate it too if you share it to them. So, But yeah, honestly guys, that is pretty much how you play motion controls in Splatoon 3. At the end of the day, if it does not work for you, you are fine to play whatever you want. But if you really do want to get better at this game, this is the most optimal way in playing Splatoon 3. And that's all I gotta say guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you did enjoy, please like, favorite, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Follow me on Twitter and Twitch, both in the description below. Do it for both if you're feeling generous. Make sure to hit that bell notification button next to the description button to let you guys know whenever I upload a video. And also consider joining my public Discord, where you can go ahead and talk to myself, my dude society community, and it's also the greatest place to be notified whenever I go live for a Twitch stream. Either way guys, I appreciate it, thank you very much, I hope you learned something. And I shall see you guys in a future video.